good afternoon everyone so it's a pretty exciting time it's the finals of the icc 2023 i would like to call upon the first team to present today uh, nanyang business school please walk towards the stage and uh, it's going to be a 25 minute presentation followed by 15 minute question answers all the best guys Apurva. Apurva, nice, nice to meet you. Johannes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Johannes. Apurva, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, Johannes. Hi, Mohammed. Thanks. My name is Darlene Wilson. I'm a senior director of cybersecurity and software development in the IoT space with Ericsson. Hi, my name is Tyson Yuenkuang. I'm a management consultant focused on private equity and uh, specialized in M&A integration and strat planning. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Serge Lou. I've been in the aerospace industry for 15 years and mostly strategy and operations. I have one of my own. My name is Sam Watts. I'm the CEO of Welcome Hall Mission here in Montreal. Hello, everyone. Christine Zalzal. I'm the senior vice president at a wealth management firm in Canada. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen present in the room, and good afternoon to the founding team of Shopify. We are the team of Nanyang Consultants, represented by my colleagues Johannes, Webhav, and Ashwari, and myself, Apurva. And we are here to tell you how you can build the future of entrepreneurship. Your organization, for the longest of time, has given the reign of its operations, of its core value, to the merchants. You value your merchants, and because of the, that reason, you have taken up a lot of initiatives to become the company of the future, the company that owns the future of entrepreneurship. What does the future of your organization looks like? To answer that question, we have to understand what are the problems of the present. And with this, I would like to bring your notice to the problems that your company currently faces. The first one being, Uh, are there any additional net revenues for Shopify to ensure profitability? The second one, how can Shopify extend its offering to own entrepreneurship? And the third one, how can Shopify protect the interests of its merchants? The core question being, how do you gain a competitive advantage over companies like Amazon that provide services to a lot of merchants these days? We come up with a hundred million dollar investment plan for you, an investment that connects with three major initiatives: Shopify Ads, Shopify Creators Hub, and Shopify Mall. And now I'll take you through all these three initiatives. The first one, Shopify Ads, it helps merchants build their own advertisement and brand identity to promote their business across digital media. You have everything that a merchant needs. What's next for them? It's the advertisement. How do they connect with the mass media? How do they connect with the people across the globe to sell their products? And that is where Shopify ads come in. The next one, Creators Hub. 
With content creator economy, it is becoming essential to utilize their expertise to promote your products. On one hand, you have the merchants, and on one hand, you have the influencers. You connect them, and here you, you get Shopify Creators Hub. The last one is the Shopify Mall. It provides a mall-like experience to all your customers. They can visit a virtual mall and, and uh, explore different merchant offerings, merchant shops, to help them navigate and explore the products that merchants have to offer. We came up with these recommendations through a series of analysis. But before that, I would like to walk you through the agenda for today. We have some strategic analysis, which includes um, the stakeholder analysis, the competitor analysis, options, and analysis of the recommendations. And then we have some implementation strategies for you. The procedures, timelines, financials, risk mitigation strategies, next steps, and summary. Let's understand the customer journey. Susan, a fitness enthusiast, wants to buy Nike shoes. She visits e-commerce platform to, to help her buy shoes. She finds a similar shoe, uh, one which is very similar to Nike, but at a cheaper price. She buys it, but at the end of the day regrets it because the quality does not match Nike, and owing to the price comparison, she buys a cheaper shoes and regrets it. So what do customers want? Customers want variety. Customers, customers want things which are economical. Customers want quality, but price competition hampers quality, which leads to customer dissatisfaction. On the flip side, we have the merchants. Merchants, for example, her shoes, a small shoe brand manufactures sports shoes. They see traffic on the e-commerce platform, but they do not see revenue. Why does this happen? Because there are a lot of competitors giving the same product at a cheaper quality and a cheaper price, but people are so sensitive about price, they do not really care about quality. How, and, and it results to a low bargaining power uh, on, on the part of her shoes, and her shoes remain helpless. So what do merchants want? Merchants want to be heard. Merchants want a valuable partnership. Merchants want less competi competition. But prices, in turn, uh, uh, drive competition, leaving to merchant dissatisfaction. We also try to do some competitor analysis for you, because uh, the most major operations are in North American region. We have Walmart and Amazon as your competitors, and you at the other end of spectrum as Shopify. So let's look at the value proposition. Amazon has everything. It's an everything e-commerce platform. Walmart has a strong presence in brick and mortar. And here you are providing end-to-end -end solutions to merchants. The bargaining power for merchants is none to, none to zero when it comes to Amazon. They have some limited power when it comes to Walmart. But with you, you give them high bargaining powers. Expertise. They have mature distribution and logistics channel when it comes to Amazon. Walmart has a strong inventory management system. And Shopify has innovation mindset, which is the mindset of the future. With that, I would like to pass it on to my colleague, Johannes, to take you through options and some analysis. Thank you. So we understand that there are ultimately three things you have to solve. First of all, you're getting pressured on your profitability. So our first focus is on finding something which brings you this profitability. Then second, you are a very mission-driven company. Your mission is empowering entrepreneurs and small businesses. And we also want to make sure that you can fulfill this mission. And then lastly, we encourage you to leap forward and take a bold step into the future. Looking into how we evaluated the different strategic options for each of these initiatives, we looked at the fit to you, to your company, we looked at the scale, and we looked at the involved risk. Looking at monetization first. Uh, one of the easiest things you could do would be just increasing the subscription fees or charging all the complementers which provide apps on your platform a higher revenue share. But we don't really see the fit with you. You are about empowering businesses, you are empowering small business, you want them to grow. And just charging them more doesn't solve this problem. So here we determined that launching an ad platform, an ad network is the way to go. And let's jump right into the analysis. Over time, you have evolved along the customer journey. 
you want to own entrepreneurship, and you've done a pretty good job. You started with providing a shopping system. Then you went into payment, you went into the fulfillment, and Shopify'd a lot of the function an entrepreneur needs. But interestingly, we think that you left out on the most attractive part of this value chain, the first step. Before a customer buys a product, he needs to get to the store. And most times, this happens by clicking on an ad. And interestingly, the ad space is very interesting. It's lucrative, you have high EBITDA margins, and you have an oligopoly of uh, Meta, of Amazon, and of course, foremost, Alphabet, the Google holding company. All these companies are really, uh, yeah, advertisers don't like them, and also the people providing the advertising space don't really like them because they are charging insane margins and they are therefore uh, stifling small businesses. What we see with you is you have 1.7 million shop providers, shop owners, shop operators on your platform. All of them pretty much uh, certainly will spend some money on advertising. So you have the potential to build your own ad network. You have the supply, you have the people who want to provide ads, who want to push out apps, and by having 1.7 million of these potential ad uh, advertisers, you will be in a very strong position to reach out to websites which have advertising space to onboard your solution. Then, looking into our second solution, we see that you have empowered entrepreneurs, you started with the shopping platform, you provide everyone with high quality shopping experience from the small business to the large business, and you have done the same with providing high quality shipping services. What entrepreneurs are still struggling with is branding. They might have this awesome shoe, but then Nike has a less quality shoe, but they have Michael Jordan and people are going to buy the shoe Michael Jordan is advertising because they don't know the small brand's high-quality shoe. So, what we see, what Shopify can do here, is launching the Creator Hub. The Creator Hub enables small brands to do what Nike is already doing by matching them up with content creators, which are small entrepreneurs themselves, and therefore democratizes advertising and branding. Because you will link up with the passionate, really good, small content creators, which then can help the sellers on Shopify to promote their brands and to market them to customers. So this is our second initiative. And let's take a look into the future. And by taking a look into the future, we interestingly look back. If you look in the brick and mortar world, you essentially have three formats of stores. You have the own individual small brick and mortar store. Then you have the supermarket, think about Walmart. And then you have the good old mall. And all of these stores ha differ across specification. The small individual stores provide the merchant with exclusivity. The customer comes to them and then looks for a product. Whereas if you're selling via a supermarket, via a retailer, via Walmart, the customer enters the store and looks for a shoe and has a plethora of brands to choose from. That's what, what the businesses, the brands, don't really like about the retailers. But then on the other hand, the retailers offer one thing the individual store doesn't have, which is the reach, which is the frequency, the traffic. And that's the interesting thing about malls. Malls aggregate a lot of different stores, so they generate a lot of traffic but people going to a mall still make a conscious decision, I want to buy my shoe at this brand, instead of saying I want to buy a shoe. And that is what is so attractive to businesses, to brands, by opening stores and malls. However, we have seen that retail is shifting online, and we think that what Spotify, uh, Shopify should do is really bring the concept of the mall into the internet. You have entered the space a bit with your shop app, but what we've seen there is that your partners, your businesses selling via Shopify, don't really like it because they are giving up the exclusivity. And by using the small concept instead of the retailer concept, you will be able to solve this conundrum. And with that, I'll hand it over to my colleague to look into the implementation of these three initiatives. Thank you, Johannes. So. Uh Essentially, what Shopify is doing right now is providing services to these merchandise uh, owners 
as well as the customers, but the customers don't really go through Shopify itself. They connect directly with these uh, merchandise uh, shops and go buy their goods over there. So what our initiatives are gonna help you do is establish an underlying platform which can inherently improve the profitability of the entire operation. Look at uh, Android. Google developers are just working on uh, developing the Android uh, platform and the app developers come in, uh, they build the apps which customers use. The more apps there are, the more customers come in which has a sort of a network effect over the platform. So what these recommendations will help you do is establish that network effect to grow the platform organically. So let's go into the implementation for the first recommendation, which is Shopify ads. So if we look at the, uh, the considerations here. So we have a look at which clients that we're gonna pick and what sort of revenue system that we uh, operate to help uh, grow the profitability of the operation. So how the ad network is gonna work is a customer, a, a, a customer, a merchandise a customer, let's say, comes in and says, okay, I, I wanna run ads. So there's this entire stream of entrepreneurial journey which is co covered by Shopify except the advertising part. We want you to help customers build their brand and establish that connection which the new generation millennials and Gen Z look for in a brand. So how this will work is there are three different uh, models here. The first one is a paper impression. The second one is paper click. And the lastly, end-to-end -end, uh, branding solutions. So what each of these will allow uh, the merchandise owners to do is reach out to these customers in a way which uh, lets them uh, connect more with who wants to buy their product. Let's say I am an established brand and I want to uh, focus more on uh, just generating more foot footfall onto my website, which I built through Shopify. Uh, I can just use the pay-per-click, pay-per-impression model to pay only for the customers who click on these advertisements. So Shopify will build this ad network, similar to what Google does with AdSense, which will redirect customers from other websites onto the Shopify website of the merchandise owner. Lastly, the end-to-end -end branding solutions are catered more towards the small uh, scale uh, entrepreneurs who do not know why the customer is buying their product. They know what, what job they're trying to do with it, but why them? which is where we offer end-to-end -end branding solutions to help them establish that image which can appeal to their audiences. How do we do, do that? That brings us to our second recommendation, which is the creator hub. Let's say uh, I, 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 I am a passionate football fan and I follow F2, which is a, a, a freestyler uh, advertising on TikTok. So this brings us to the first side of the platform where we have uh, F2, the freestyler, soccer freestyler, who has that audience, has that brand connection with uh, his followers, but no products to sell. On the other hand, we have the shoe company, Power Shoes, which has that product, but does not have that connection with the customers. They don't know how to advertise, how to connect with their customers. So what this platform will help both sides to do is use their needs and meet each other's needs as well to offer a comprehensive solution. So we do not, uh, we do not just recommend this for the sake of doing it. Uh, we evaluate both sides based on certain criteria. We know that F2 on one hand has that connection, has that branding, what platforms he's using. Let's say he's using TikTok, for example. So we promote the AdSense on the TikTok platform. On the other hand, we have, uh, let's say, uh, the Par Shoe Company, which has certain criteria. Do they have good quality of shoes? Do they have that uh, reviews? Uh, those reviews on their website, which a uh, influencer would find would, would find very helpful in order to ensure that his uh, followers uh, have that connection. So, having these uh, influencers connect with these brands create something which is far greater than what each of them individually could offer, leveraging each other's uh, uh, positive impact. So the last one recommendation, which brings us to do is, 
let's compare the Amazon uh, model with the Shopify model. Amazon is more like a supermarket. You go in, you get into the cereal aisle, and you see a list of, uh, like a plethora of cereals there, and you pick whichever one you need. What this does is commoditizes the good itself and fails for a brand to stand out uh, in the aisle. What we suggest you do is do not go there, which is the exact same reason why the sellers were rebelling in the first place. We encourage you to build more of a mall model, but we are not asking you to build physical malls because the capex is extremely high. What we are asking you to do here is build virtual malls. We leverage the rise of the metaverse in the current industry and build these virtual malls where people can come in and experience the uh, mall-like uh, atmosphere wherein there are these individual shops which allow retailers to maintain their own specific brand and identity without commoditizing the goods that they sell. So there are a lot of considerations here as well. We have a, we have a, a prime focus on product presentation fit. You cannot customize the Amazon homepage, for example, if you're selling shoes. You will see other shoes next to your own shoe, which can be lower priced and Im influence uh, the customer decision. Here, you can customize within the uh, mall, uh, virtual mall, the look and feel of your store. The customer can come in and experience what is a, a very targeted and uh, very customized uh, experience for them. So uh, there is one last consideration here, which is the scale issue. We know one of the primary factors that a customer looks for when going to a physical mall is spatial convenience, which this targets in the virtual workspace. But also, you can get that, uh, that particular product and bring it back home the same day, which is why we encourage that you restrict these geographies to areas where you can offer that sense of fulfillment. By restricting the offerings only within the North American region, uh, mainly uh, USA and Canada, what we do is uh, essentially allow the customer to experience the benefits of the physical uh, shopping experience while being in a virtual space. So we did evaluate everything on certain criteria. We look at uh, things like the sales expertise, what sort of brand loyalty looks like in these uh, particular uh, regions, uh, and we believe that North America is the way to go. So with that, for all these implementations, now I would like to hand it over to my colleague Ari to walk you through the implementation process. Thank you, Faibaf. So good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. I'll proceed with the implementation plan. How do we proceed with the strategies since we also have three strategies? Everything has their own um, individual timeline that we already put into place. So the first one is the Shopify ads. We understand that in order for us to um, enable uh, merchants to have their own advertising system, they will come to us and it means we have to develop our own advertising system first. We'll develop it uh, in-house, and we hope within one year, we'll have our first uh, merchant to uh, subscribe already to our advertising network. That's the first one. Second one is Sh Shopify Creators Hub. Uh, before actually developing any product with the collaborators, we need to make sure that we found the right collaborators first. So how do we find them? We have already some scoreboards that uh, my colleagues already mentioned. Once we uh, sure that they are the right um, collaborators, the right creators that we can work with. We can then uh, develop the products with them, and then we hope in a few years, in, in two years or more a bit, uh, we can have our first collaborators with their product launch in our uh, platform. And the last one is Shopify Mall. We understand this is a new realm. This is totally new uh, space for, for all the retailers. So we understand we need to develop it a bit longer. So we develop first the, the system itself, the whole experience. And then we hope by within three years, I would say, we have our first uh, client that already have the digital mall in our platform. So that's uh, how we will implement these three strategies. And then we hope with 100 million investment, which we will put 70 million in the malls, 
one million in the advertising and 20 million for the um, the creators hub, we, we can double the profit of the company in five years. We forecast already our organic growth, and we understand that within five years, we will already have five billion of organic profit. And by doing these three strategies, we hope we can double your profit by five years. Last one, I'll talk about the risk. Of course, it, uh, all these strategies will not come at any risk. So there might be one possibility where people will not visit our Shopify mall. In that case, we have to make sure that our mall experience in our digital mall will be more or less the same with the actual physical mall. We'll have to have attractions. We have to make the, the, the experience seamless. And we have to make sure that all the stores are there and, and the products can be, can be uh, bought. And then second one is inaccurate our targeting. Since we'll, we will have ad systems in our, our platform, we have to make sure we can target the right audience. And the last one is if the creators uh, circumvent the uh, purchase of the product, if, they don't, if they, we help them develop the products, but they then sell it to the customers, not through our platform. Of course, to mitigate that risk, we'll have to make sure that we have the right uh, contracts with the creators and everything has to be done by our approval as well. With that, we would like to tell you what the next steps are. First one, we need to reach out to merchants, make sure they want to subscribe to our ads. Second one, identify the merchants and influencers so that they can collaborate with us. And the last one, hire talent to develop the uh, malls. So uh, the summary, we have three recommendations. First one, we develop the ad systems. Second one, creators hub. And the last one, uh, create, the, create the malls. But one thing we want to make sure that we all understand here, we are Shopify. Our main assets is our merchants. Our main assets are the fact that merchants want to collaborate with us because we have uh, value propositions that no other marketplace can provide that to them. So with that, I would like to conclude that merchants are our main assets. Thank you for the presentation for for listening to our presentations. We are happy to take questions. Thank you very much. That was a great presentation. Um, one of the analysis slides that you had in the comparisons for the selection of your um, your implementations going forward. Um, you ruled out increasing the pricing, and the pricing hasn't been increased for Shopify since about 2017. So I'm just wondering, could you elaborate more on why you did rule that out? Mm -hmm. So our understanding is that we are still we are still facing uh, phenomenal growth uh, on on the on the revenue side. Uh, profitability, of course, is an issue, and that's that's why it seems like a, like a very very obvious solution to increase the pricing. However, we are here going into into the idea of uh, growing the pie instead of getting a larger slice of the pie uh, because what we understand is that you have this unique relationship with the merchants. Merchants love you because you are the enabler of small business whereas Amazon is the destructor of small business and we really want to want to cater to this narrative and ensure that you can continue to thrive on that. And therefore we see that advertising is this high margin industry uh, Alphabet, uh, Facebook, they have EBITDA margins of uh, 30 plus percent. And we just believe that this is a way you can add value to your clients, to your uh, customers, to your subscribers, and at the same time raise your profitability. So we wanted to go to a win-win situation instead of a win-lose situation here. Thank you. Thanks, that was a great presentation. Really nice visuals too. Um, I'd like to know, how do you plan to manage the risk of volatility related to uh, influencers? So let's say, for example, I'm Adidas and I decide to partner with Kanye. Um, how would you manage the sort of you know, volatility related to potential associations of brands? Sure. So uh, if I may elaborate on the same example. So the issue with Adidas and Kanye was that the sole identity of the brand was very closely coupled with the identity of the influencer. So we do not want to do that. The, the uh, offerings within the ad system that we would offer through the Creator Hub, what they would do is more of a product 
to influence her thing. Of course, there would be a, a vetting process. Uh, there would be considerations of the platform, the nature of the influencer, as well as the nature of their followers, for example. But associating an entire brand, building an entire brand around a single person has never worked in the past. We're seeing the same uh, example with uh, Tesla right now, for example. Once the influencer shifts their focus or deviates from the persona that they have in front of their customers, it can have negative influences uh, on the entire company that they're associated with. So a heavy dependency is something that we would not encourage, and having the entire system within uh, Shopify would help us c have more control over the same. Thank you for the presentation. Um, it's appreciated. Uh, I want to you know, maybe dive a bit deeper on the Shopify mall and what's going to be required from the merchants in terms of expertise or investment to be able to join that virtual mall and uh, metaverse. Sure, I can take that up. So what we want to uh, emphasize here that it is a virtual mall. So like in a physical mall, you go and you look around and there are shops, but not like a marketplace where you get everything at one place. They're dedicated shops. So from merchants, what we require, because we have in-house expertise, we have the innovation mindset and a team that has capabilities to build in-house solutions. What we require from merchants is a sign up to understand how the model works and offer their solutions on the, uh, on the mall. So they would be able to uh, register their shops on the mall based on geographies. We'll be able to customize for a person how and what shops are available to them on a particular location. Thank you, and uh, great presentation too, is sort of what we expect at this level. Uh, but uh, my question is about the app that we launched. Uh, didn't really see it or hear it in this particular presentation, which is okay. What is your recommendation with respect to what we should do with this app? Sure, so uh, the Shopify mall solution that we offer is essentially a rebuild of the shop app. Uh, the shop app is not very popular with the merchants because of one specific reason that it is inherently trying to commoditize goods for retailers who are offering products to their consumers. The main differentiating factor for those retailers is the ability to connect with their customers, having that customized storefront. And once you start aggregating everything, you, the, retailers, the, the customers start comparing each and everything with each other. So if I, see a Nike, if I go into a Nike uh, store, I have a range of Nike shoes to look at. But if I uh, go on Amazon, for example, and I search for shoes, you, they would be showing me Adidas shoes next to it, which is what the shop app did. Moving it into, uh, changing the solution to the uh, mall experience that we said allows retailers to basically uh, maintain their uh, identity. The, the, in, within a particular store, the customer would only see things regarding that store, which would allow uh, the merchants more freedom over the branding and the layout feel of the store itself. So which is why we would discourage investing more into the shop app, because it completely disagrees with the core value proposition that Shopify offers its merchant customers. Maybe if I may add on to that. So um, our focus will be on the website, but since we already have the app, we think uh, we have, uh, the idea that we have in mind is it can be complementary, but still the main, uh, uh, the main platform will be the website. How can it be complementary? So um, we want uh, the users to experience malls and what do we do at malls right we try on shoes we try on uh, we try on clothes jackets and everything and we hope by integrating our website or website to our phones which is the app we can use the hardware that's installed in our phones such as cameras to um uh, to act as a ar augmented reality like for instance if you want to try on shoes in a mall you have to physically go to the mall and try it right but since it's digital malls you can um just picture your feet, and it will be there will be a shoes over there, right? And then uh, we also had this idea about uh, glasses. Like you want to try on, say, Ray-Ban glasses. You go to the mall, you see what what it looks like. The shade is which level. You might want to uh, say to the your app that I want to try these glasses, and then you make 
you can probably like look around with your camera and your phone, and then you can say, oh, the, the level of the shade is this much, something like that. So again, uh, we want to make sure all the, our consumers will experience the, the physical mall digitally, and we will use the app as a, complimentary, uh, as a complement of our website platform. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I have a question on geography, if I understood it correctly, and if you can clarify. You mentioned that you're going to be launching your solutions to North America, so US and Canada. Now, looking at Shopify's revenue mix, um, actually, they number two revenue is in Europe, and number three revenue is in Asia, and Canada's way down the list. So do you feel that you will be limiting or hampering your growth um, based on focusing on really one, one market, which is the US. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for the question. So uh, based on my understanding, uh, what we decided for your company was instead of focusing on the consumer, so the revenue numbers come from a, con a customer focus, the end consumer focus. We want to steer the company into the merchant focus, which has grown it to the level that it is. So we looked at the locations of these merchants so we be, we see that uh, highlighted in the in the uh, map itself. Uh, a lot of these merchants are like one of the biggest areas is uh, San Francisco, wherein there is a heavy concentration of these uh, merchants who want to sign up and sell these goods. So the key criteria that we had, the, one of the primary criteria, was fulfillment. So what convenience that physical malls offer is you get the goods as soon as you exit the store. We want to replicate that as closely as possible within the virtual malls as well. So fulfillment and uh, proper uh, fulfillment quality as well as the time difference between purchasing the thing and it being delivered to your doorstep is key. As per our understanding, the heavy investment that has happened in your company recently uh, is for a one to two year, one to two day delivery within uh, US and Canada. And we want to leverage on that to help steer the platform. Thanks. Maybe to take it back to the ads, I'd like to understand a bit more about how they work. Um, influencers are on platforms where I understand a lot of the ads are already embedded into the platform. So Facebook ads on, uh, you know, um, Instagram and Facebook, and um, Google ads on on Google platforms or Alphabet platforms. So can you go a little bit deeper into that and how, what, where you would meet the influencers, where those ads would be running, and how they would drive the traffic. Happy to take that question. So just to reiterate, the ad network and the uh, influencer, the creator hub, are two, two separate initiatives. With the ad network, our idea is really about empowering the small businesses. So what we have done for merchants, uh, we can scale to other businesses. You just mentioned that like, chunk of the, of the current advertising revenue goes through Google, goes through Instagram, and which is Meta. So then you have all these small website operators who offer high quality content, which only have a choice between these uh, big conglomerates. And the ad network is really the idea that you can have a more peer-to-peer -peer network where you have the small businesses on Shopify connecting with websites which are providing high quality content and providing them an alternative to these uh, big corporate advertising networks. What we see here is that the quality of the ads will be nicer. Instead of getting an advertisement for the 100th coaching of getting rich in five days, you will see actual products you're passionate about. Thanks. That was kind of the question I was leaning towards, but I'll just uh, go ahead and leverage that and elaborate. Um, same topic on the ads. Could you clarify a little bit what are your assumptions behind the monetization process? Um, you know, in the same sense that it, ad revenue is heavily predicated and uh, driven by traffic on large platforms. What are the assumptions here that support the growth for um, you know the ads portion of uh, the business for you? So we are building our assumptions based on our merchant base of 1.7 million. And we assume that 20% of them will be ultimately end up using the Shopify platform. This is a, is a fairly low share, but we wanted to go with a conservative estimate. And our projection is that they will be spending on average $100 per month on advertising via the Shopify ad platform. And 
with these uh, with these one hundred dollars per month, we are assuming a twenty percent EBITDA margin, which would then translate into profits for us. The other eighty percent, of course, would go into into maintaining the ad network and, of course, paying the uh, let's say billboard providers, which would be the websites we are advertising on. Just to add on to that, so uh, the exact in-depth detail that we discussed, uh, the model exactly will be a CPC CPM based model for the bigger ones and for the small businesses, uh, they would be able to curate their custom needs. Let's say I want to develop a brand identity, a logo or a color theme for my particular store. So those will be more curated for them, whereas the other sector would be more CPC CPM based, similar to what uh, Google does. Just if I may add a little adding to that. So we actually had these uh, predictions, for, uh, forecast predic predictions of the revenues and everything. Uh, ads and all these other three strategies, uh, we forecasted already the, the revenue growth and the profit. Uh, so adding to Johannes, yes, we assume that 20% of the stores um, will subscribe to our ad systems and everything, that will contrib contribute to our additional uh, revenue and profit. Thank you. Thank you for that last intervention. It's a perfect segue to my question that I had about share price and you know, what's your projection in terms of when we can start showing a, a, a flux into our profits and uh, knowing that there is a little bit of impatience uh, from the market on our and pressure on our share price. Sure. So the three recommendations are split into the short, medium, and long term. The long term uh, uh, recommendation is the Shopify mall, which is catered more towards the vision of the company, whereas ad network will help generate a completely new net new uh, revenue stream for Shopify. So what this will do is leverage. Uh, so uh, we, we see advertisement as a platform as well. There are users engaging with the ads, and there are uh, merchants who want to run ads. Usually companies have a trouble, uh, a hard time growing one side of this platform. So you want to be able to reach consumers while uh, being able to get advertisers onto the platform. The inherent advantage of Shop Shopify is we already have those uh, merchants on the platform who are looking for a simplified uh, ad solution. So that will generate the revenue stream which will help the stock price. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Just wanna thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everyone. Uh, hi everyone. Requesting you to please settle down uh, for the second wave presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wave two presentation. I would like to call upon uh, Barna Management School. Please greet the judges and come up to the stage. Thank you. It's so nice meeting you. It's so nice meeting you. It's so nice meeting you. Hi, Virginia. Okay. Hello, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Christine Zalzal, and I'm a senior VP at a wealth management firm in Canada. And Sam Watts, I'm the CEO of Welcome Hall Mission here in Montreal. I'm uh, Serge Edoux, uh, mainly in aerospace industry for 15 years in strategy and operations. Mm. Tyson Nguyen I'm a management consultant focused on private equity, uh, M&A integration and strategy and planning. Darlene Wilson, I'm a senior director at Ericsson in software development and cybersecurity. Nice meeting you all. Thanks for having us. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Is there anything? Is there anything? Okay. All right. PowerPoint. Okay. This way. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, is it working? Okay. We're sorry. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Board of Directors of Shopify. We are the Barna Consulting Group. These are my colleagues, Itzel, Luis, and Hector, and I am Virginia. We want you to take a second to imagine that you are a small uh, local business owner. Most of the sales that you make are through foot traffic in the small town that you're currently based at. You're seeing these current trends in e-commerce and you're wondering, how can I take advantage of that? You're in a place where you are currently facing COVID and you're not really getting as many sales as you would like and you're struggling to stay afloat. So ask Shop Shopify, we will show you how you can bring power to small and medium merchants through this tool that we will be showing you. This is the agenda we will be going through today. Please take a moment to read it. So we wanted to, before we propose the solution that we are going to be recommended today, we wanted to walk you through some of the factors that we were considering when proposing this to you. So the challenges that you're, uh, that you're facing right now is the competing force of Amazon. They are gigantic and you, it's becoming really difficult to, um, to compete with them, but where you shine is by protecting your merchant's interests. So, they are currently trying to cut at their, at their profits and not really keeping their best interests in mind. And that is where you shine with, with your merchants. So this is something that is a challenge right now. How do we keep growing? How do we become, we continue to be profitable while protecting the merchant's interests? The key issue here that we identified was how can you bring your merchants closer to your customers? Amazon has the advantage that they have a huge traffic and that even though they are not that close to the merchant and they are not in keeping their best interests in mind, you they have to the merchants are being forced to be in that in, in that website because they have that huge foot traffic and huge traffic in their website that you currently are trying to reach to compete with. 
The goal here is to grow the numbers of merchants and customers using the shop app. That will be the, the place where they will be merging together for that uh, shopping experience. And the strategy is to the campaign to empower local merchants. The impact that we will have here is 52 billion USD increase in revenue by 2026 and um, the uh, 54 USD increase in stock valuation. So first, some of the um, other information that we were considering, just a little bit of a reminder, how can you bring your merchants closer to their customers? That is the main issue that is at hand here. As we mentioned before, you are currently in the middle of your customers and the merchants, and we want to be able to merge these two together a little bit more tightly so they can continue getting that flow of traffic and sales. And that this tool that we're considering and recommending to you will allow us to do that. So we did an analysis just to arrive at the conclusions that we will be proposing. So the growing in the opportunities, you have the growing number of small and medium businesses that uh, arise every day that you could be taking advantage of because that is, uh, th these are some of, the, some of the customers that you have. Um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs needing help of tools like the ones that you propose that will help them grow their business when they don't have infrastructure for operations and for um, delivery services and you also help them out with marketing and you provide a lot of tools for entrepreneurs to really launch their business and be able to be there for the customers when they have when they need a certain product uh in the shift towards e-commerce that we mentioned before is a huge factor here too the threats are obviously Amazon and other uh, online retailers, sales outside of the of digital and or your Shopify platform, inflation due to COVID, and then, as we mentioned, tied with Amazon, the 89% of customers preferring to buy from them. That is something that you're going to need to fight, and by finding solutions for customers to feel closer to your brand and the app that you're uh, that you have right now the shop app that will bring them closer to the merchants that you are uh, selling their products in strengths you have div diversification and the merchant first strategy where they are your main focus and uh, flexible subscription plan models for merchants as well and weaknesses we have low customer brand awareness a low profit profitability, uh, which is something that you're going through right now, and merchant reluctance to use the shop app due to showing some of the products in comparison to their competition. They, as you as you know, what one of your main, main values is uh, putting the merchant first, and they feel like that goes against that by creating a competition between merchants like Amazon. So from these opportunities, uh, threats, strengths, and weaknesses, we were able to come up with a couple alternatives and solutions to these problems. That, and then my colleagues will go in, into the alternatives and, and the recommendation that we eventually chose. So we could create new streams of revenue by uh, social media alliances such as TikTok, Instagram, um, Create new way for customers to interact with the brands by using an AI chat that personalizes their experience when they go into the merchant site. Uh, the opportunities is, look, the one that we have right here is location-based system that allows customers to see local merchants to purchase their products and ship them using uh, local uh, delivery aggregators. And then we can re, uh, renew this, uh, the strategy price due to inflation. So increase the, the price for merchants a little bit so, to help our profitability. So um, we have three main alternatives here, which are the shop local uh, project, the empower local shop social project, empower local merchants, and shop X, which are derived from the alternatives that we saw before. Now I will pass it off to Itzel, who will go over the strategy. Thank you, Virginia.
Are you listening to me? Okay. <laughs> it's okay now. <laughs> uh, thank you, Virginia, for going through the key issue and going through the alternatives, the way that we got them. Right now, we're going to go through the criteria that are important to your company because we don't want to decide something that is against your values. First of all, we decide that it's very important to align the decision to your company values. Secondly, profitability is something that you are looking for because you are growing, but you don't have profit. And implementation cost, the investment that it will require. Merchant's interest, that is uh, very important to you. And brand awareness. So every uh, alternative will have some benefits and some consideration. However, we're going to show the different benefits and consideration and see which, which is the best one that fits your company. The first one, Shop Social Project, it has some cons uh, consideration like long negotiation because you need to uh, find the social media that is in align with your interests and it might be difficult for you. Also, the merchants and company values might not be aligned with the strategy, but you have some benefits here. High interaction with the uh, brand through the social media, will we, you'll have brand awareness. Also, low investment due to the alliances. You have a, a platform that is already there, so you need to have uh, a lot of investment to develop. Secondly, empower local merchants. You have aligned uh, it's aligned with the company values. So all the, the merchants' interests will be integrated here. At the same time, you have high brand merchants' awareness and being, profi being profitable while growing is something that you're looking for. However, you need to take into account the higher investment compared to the other alternative alternatives that we've mentioned before. Third, shop X or shop experience. It's, uh, it has the benefit of adding value to the existing value proposition that the mer merchant side and the customer are looking for, but you need to consider high implementation costs due, that, due to the new technology and the low brand awareness due to the, uh, just an update to the shop uh, application. So if you see, uh, if you come up with that, this alternative and these criteria and we, you to put it in a um, decision matrix, we can find out that the best uh, and the decision that we recommend for you is the power local merchandise. Why? Because this is aligned to your values, to the, your, your values, your company values, but also your the merchandise, which is uh, your customers. And also, it will be a higher brand awareness for your merchants. But third, you will have a profit, which is very good for your company right now. Now my colleague, Luis, is going to go through the action plan. Thank you, sir. Right, you guys can hear me, right? OK, good. So how are we going to make this all together? How can we make it work? We're, we're actually bringing the, the we're, we're strategizing in two pillars, two main pillars. One, bringing it to life, the new business model, the new uh, f app feature that is going to take it to the next level, and with our marketing strategy. So how are we planning on bringing it to life? Well, first, it will only take a small development, a small modification of what you, we currently, you guys currently have on your app, which is to activate through location base, and you'll be able to view your, the merchants on the app. So let's say uh, you're just arriving. You can search for your merchant, and then you'll be able to see where are they actually located. The small modifications on the app will be this next, this new feature called uh, Shop Local. And will actually connect you to all the local merchants around. We got to measure this through how many locals uh, shows on the merchants and how can you access their store. Virginia? You want to go a little bit? One second. All right, one second. Bring it to life. It's not there. It's not there. 
Yeah. Just create the experience. Yeah. Okay. okay, no, well, give me one second then. All right, so how are we planning on doing the other part of the strategy? <laughs> All right, so first, the marketing strategy is actually going to be com complied by how we can actually attach the aggregators, who are going to be our, your new business partners, and they'll help you in to expand part of what the product will, of what your locals would actually attach. So if I, one second, can you hear? All right. So the local aggregators give you a leverage power to actually offer through your customers what we call same day delivery. And here we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Meet Monica. So Monica is a local artisan who makes jewelry based in Punta Cana. She has just opened her second location. Her main one is in Santo Domingo. And even though she has a loyal customer base in Santo Domingo, she wants to have more exposure into this new market that she's entering. And with the help of the Shopify app and the, the Shop app, she will be reaching uh, tourists and people who are already based in that location who will be able to find her through the application and go to her store to bring these fine jewels to their homes. Pero, so, customer facing. The idea now will be to how we can actually reach our customers. What are the new benefits uh, your company is going to offer the users for the, Spotify, uh, the Shopify app? Meet Pierre. So he's a Canadian businessman, and he is visiting the Dominican Republic. He is, his flight is leaving in two hours, and he hasn't bought a gift for his wife. So using the Shopify app, he will be able to order these fine jewels from Monica's store and bring his wife a beautiful Larimar necklace, and that will be delivered to his hotel room while he is packing his suitcase. So now I'm going to pass it to Hector, who's going to be talking about some of the financials. Thank you, Luis. Okay. First of all, we want to talk about a bit about what our timeline here is. Our goal as a, our, our goal as, as a firm is to actually offer you a comprehensive plan for you to deploy not only in the DR, but also in, in the rest of Latin America, Caribbean, and probably some countries in South America as well. So we're focusing very heavily in some key points here. First of all, we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna make some, we're gonna develop the feature here in the first three quarters, and that's gonna cost you about a $1.4 million. We are also going to uh, do some groundwork with key partners uh, to be able to actually deploy in the Deploy in deploy in the Caribbean, Central America, South America. You will need to actually go to the country, talk to people, and see what key partners you can actually use to actually improve the feature you're uh, you're actually bringing to the country. The idea here is to actually leverage local communities to be able to not only grow your grow your merchant base but also grow your customer base. Then we're going to have here, of course, beta testing in house. You want to make sure the, the feature works. And here we have the first beta test deployment in Punta Cana. The idea here is to actually test it in the most, in the most rudimentary way. We want to make sure that if this works here, it can actually work in the rest of the Caribbean and Central America. Mm -hmm. When we have that testing done, we just want to do a little stress test in the rest of, in the, rest of, in the, rest of the Dominican Republic to make sure that you can ac actually handle the, handle the volume with this new feature. And then we're going to do some marketing here. The, the, the marketing here is actually a little, a little bit conservative and low. The idea here is that you want to work with local, with local companies, to, uh, to, with, with local businesses, to actually integrate every part of the community you're, you're trying to join. The idea here is to make a guideline for you to not only for you to expand in a section of the market that you are currently not, not that you're currently not investing in. Most of your investments are currently in infrastructure in the United States and in very uh, American-based, uh, North America, Canada-based uh, based stations. But we, are, but we feel that there is a huge market there that you can actually approach. By replicating this section here, we believe you can actually start opening up 
Shopify in the, to the rest of the world. So some of the, some of the givens we actually assume here. First of all, we are assuming that, that you will keep a similar growth that, that, that you're currently going through. You're actually, you're actually grow, growing very, very fast in, in revenues, but you are investing heavily. The idea here is to actually leverage all, that, all, all the profit to actually open up in other countries that you're currently not aiming at. Another of the assumptions that we're making is that you have the development team to be able to do it. Uh, we, we honestly believe that you do, so there's really no risks there. Now, there has to be an interest in the merchants. The, the merchants are key here. One of your biggest differentiators with Amazon is that you are not only you are you are not only a connection for customers and merchants. You're a bridge. You're the one that actually needs to make the merchants interested in the product to keep the connection with the with the customer going. So, how is the source of funding? First of all, self fund. With the new revenues that we're actually uh, uh, pr projecting, we understand that you have enough uh, funding to actually, to actually uh, invest in this small project here. And we also believe that with key partners in local communities, you, you can actually lower some of your expenses, pro probably in marketing. And we also, uh, as, uh, we're also uh, thinking that you might be able to actually increase some of your su subscription fees. Uh, it's that, that's a very small part of your of your of your revenue, but we do believe there that there is a gap there, not only in in the subscription fees, but also in the margins you actually take from the from uh, from from the sales of the uh, of the products. This is a very simple graph. Like this is a very simple uh, simple projection based on your current uh, on your current on your current trend of growth. Uh, what we did do was actually add a bit on the top on the on the 2025 uh, year, just adding a, a bit of the Car Car Caribbean and, La and Latin American community that we believe that you will be uh, targeting there. Mm -hmm. And based on this, like the main summary of this, what are we doing here? That's all. That, this is go go this is going to be a 3.1 million dollar investment. The, the, the idea here is that by actually investing in, in these features, we would actually create more revenues and increase the valuation of your company back to where, uh, back to uh, not, the, not, the, not the past, not the, uh, not the $120 that it was, but we do believe there is, uh, there is some valuation there that is being lost because of miscommunication and the idea that you're not growing in the right direction. And also, we and also we are assuming that 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 with these new changes, there will be a new inflow of revenue. Now, some of the risk we actually evaluated. Some of the risk is uh, oh, <coughs> some of the some of the risk are that what? Oh, yeah, of course, the no the, the no funding for the aggregate for the delivery aggregators in the country. The idea is that you want to you want to leverage as much of the current community's infrastructure. And by actually implement, implementing this in Punta Cana, uh, we actually believe that you can see a lot of the different type of uh, delivery service that you will see in every country. Uh, we, we're, we're talking about Hugo, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, Pedidos Ya, Delivery RD. These are some, some bigger, some smaller delivery service that you should actually start getting into connections with. The idea here is that maybe you can actually even, even do some purchases of some of these businesses just to be able to, to acquire that infrastructure. One of the other, oh, one of the other, other, other risks is that mer merchants aren't interested in the idea of actually opening doors and compete in the local market because they believe that that's a negative thing. But, but we understand that with a very strong uh, marketing campaign focused on the merchants, we believe that we can actually get those key, key participants in, in local communities that make uh, art crafts, uh, art, ca art crafty products. And we believe that with that, we can actually get them on board. Now I'm gonna leave you with my colleague Virginia for the key takeaways. Okay. 
as we saw, the key issue here is how are we bringing our customers closer to our merchants? We, our recommendation was to grow the number of merchants and customers using the shop app with the location-based feature that we're going to be adding. And the strategy will be the local, um, Power Local Merchants campaign. The results here will be the increase of revenue um, by 2026 to 52 billion and the increase in stock valuation. We are the Varna Consulting Group and the forum is now open for any questions. Thank you very much. It was a very good presentation. Um, I had a question on your tool, which is the aggregator um, that uh, matches the customer in the local area to, mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. merchant. We're a global company, mm -hmm. so I'm curious why you're limiting it to, um, to, to local searches when customers um, could possibly get the best product from wherever. Would so, that limit your revenue um, uptake too? Yeah, so uh, we're not just thinking local. There's going to be an option to uh, to increase the shopping area. We just wanted to do this so you could uh, target your small and medium merchants, which is something that you, you really focus on. Then this will bring newer merchants and bring the customers closer to them. But um, yeah, so we're not only limiting to the market that we explain here, we're hoping to bring it to the rest of the world and all the markets that you're currently in. So it will. this will just be where we're starting. I just wanna add, it would be part of the strategy to acquire this small and medium merchants so they can actually open up their products and sell it worldwide as well. Uh, my question's gonna be around numbers because you put a number of numbers out there to us. We're a company the, the more we grew, the more money we lost, uh, with one minor exception, if you remember the, the numbers. So you, I need you to convince me that we can grow at a rate of $8 billion a year over the next six years, five years, and still retain some degree of cash in the bank and profitability, because that's one heck of a hockey stick, to use a Canadian term. I want to hear about it. <laughs> Yes, of course. We und yes, of course. We understand that you're currently uh, that you're currently growing at about 60, 60, 70 percent uh, every year, and we know that you are spending heavily in in inf in infrastructure to be able to give to your co to your customers to their delivery. We understand that that the, the reason you're that that the reason you're not being profitable is a very conscious decision. You're making heavy investments in, in the field to be able to actually battle with mm -hmm. some of the biggest giants in the industry or the biggest giant in the industry. Your deal, uh, your problem here is that you don't want to compromise. You have a very tight, uh, you have a very, uh, you, you, you have a very tight connection with, with merchants and you don't really want to grow in a way that, I, that actually hurts their connection with their customers. We believe that you can actually, uh, that you can actually afford this. Uh, because we know that uh, based on the based on your investments in 2023 2024 you are making a one uh, one billion dollar investment in infrastructure and what we are actually suggesting here is just a groundwork to be uh, to actually complement that growth that you are currently doing i don't know if <laughs> thank you for the presentation uh, interesting uh, just if you can help clarify the shop app and your recommendation, is it gonna be a marketplace type of, of research or what kind of, what's gonna be the interface when you look for a product? Right, so there was more than meant to be there, but we had some technical issues. But um, what we hope to do with this is that this will be an added tool to the shop app that you already have. So you will have different tabs and this location-based one will be one of them we're not changing the fundamentals of what the shop app is and i rem and from the information that you provided to us there were some issues with merchants not wanting to to have all the products um sep showed with the competitors but that will be a separate tab and the one that we have right now is just location based so the customers have an added use of that app 
so we can create more traffic to the app, bring uh, business to local merchants, and also bring the, the merchants together with the customers and just creating more traffic in the in the application that you currently have right now. Mm -hmm. But it won't be fundamentally changing what it is. It's just an added feature that, for example, if I need to go, if, for example, I live in Dominican Republic, I need to go buy a bowl, I would like to see all the local shops around me who have different types of this bowl that I might want. I can order it or I can buy it from the app and go pick it up. I hope that clarifies th things a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, very clean presentation and visuals. I liked it a lot. Um, similar question on the shop app. Uh, one of the key concerns from merchants is uh, the competition. So when you're doing a search, just to reuse the example you just provided, you're looking for a bowl. I think the concern from merchants would be to not have a bunch of different competitors selling a similar product mm -hmm. item. I think you flagged in the risk uh, slide that the way to mitigate that is to um, to deliver search results through uh, categories. Mm -hmm. So could you just clarify how yeah. you view that as a way to reduce uh, the competitive uh, For sure. context? So from, from the information provided, what we were analyzing was that the customers were mainly concerned about, for example, having all the different bowls shown in the application in next to each other so they could be like comparing prices. And to kind of reduce that a little bit, we still wanna have all the shops there. We still want the customers to be able to see the things that they're going to purchase. We thought of separating it by category. So you're buying sportswear, you're buying bowls, you're buying something and completely different, but it's gonna be, your, you'll search the, um, the category and it'll show you the shops that currently have those items. And then when you go into that shop, it will show you that first. But it won't be so easy for the customer to be like, oh, this is how much it is at this one, this is how much it is one at this one. So it will be like, oh, I recognize this merchant, I'm gonna go buy it from there because they have it available. So I th we hope that that will ease the concerns from merchants a little bit because we know the value of this application, what it can bring them. So we don't wanna dissuade them from using it. Thank you for the presentation. It's very good. Um, one question. I like the idea of being able to uh, have location-based shopping uh, for environmental reasons to support mm -hmm. local businesses. Um, I'm just curious, though, uh, because Spotify is a global platform and the barrier to entry is quite low already to access global markets. Um, the lowest subscription fee is under $30, I think, mm -hmm. a month. Um, are you doing a different pricing model to get that barrier to entry lower into this? Or what is the real differentiator other than the location-based part? Yes. Yes, sure. I think, one second, I think I have a very rough, <laughs> a very rough little, not even, yeah, like what, this is a very, very uh, small, uh, small graph about how much Amazon is actually charging uh, the customers, and we believe that there is a gap that that is actually very, very attractive to small businesses. If you see, I actually evaluated that by using local uh, local services and local communities, you can actually re re reduce the uh, the amount you actually charge in delivery in in delivery fee, and also in advertisement. The idea here is to actually is to actually use this use this uh, use this leverage you have by reducing uh, with the reduction in cost in delivering uh, advertisement and increase a bit more your 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 cut of every item you actually get from them. And we do think that this is, this is still a pretty attractive uh, number for, for local businesses. Mm -hmm. Besides that, one of the ideas we actually evaluated was a, 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 free, a, free Shopi, a, a free Shopify tier. The idea here is that you currently have around half a million uh, small businesses using your, using your services that are paying $26 uh, per, uh, per per merchant and we and we actually saw that that's a very small number of uh, small small revenue that you're getting through there and by actually having a free tier we believe that you can actually grab a lot more of the merchants in local small areas mm -hmm. while not affecting your revenue stream in a very significant way 
Um, I had the question about pricing too, so I'll go down my list. Um, you mentioned that you're, you hope to gain extra revenue through Instagram and knowing that uh, usually it costs to, to be on Instagram, to manage it, et cetera. So if you can elaborate how you're making revenue um, uh, from social media. Oh yeah, that, that was, uh, the idea is not to get revenue from social media, but, but uh, getting traction and movement through social media by, by actually investing mm -hmm. in, in small to medium small to medium sized creators, we understand that they have a very high engagement with their user base. Through them, we can actually get in touch with a lot of uh, customers that might be interested in local shoppery, like local very, very, very artistry items. That's where we were going with the Instagram revenues. And my question is, uh, since 2017, we at Shopify have not increased our subscription numbers. Mm -hmm. And you snuck something into your presentation there where you said maybe you would consider increasing that. Convince me that that's a good idea. Yes, <laughs> of course. We understand that, that what you're actually, uh, most of your rev revenue comes, from the, comes fr from the sales you get from every item. As we said earlier, your, your, the revenue you get from, you get from subscription is actually uh, very uh, small, in, uh, small, to, uh, small and doesn't re really re represent a very high revenue stream for you. We believe that actually by offering a free subscription, you can actually follow the, follow the, loc the current technology trends of actually having the doors wide open for new merchants and new consumers to actually experience your, your tool. Your tool is already developed. By having a free tier, you're, you're actually opening the doors to new types of monetizations that, can, that may actually come from the lower barrier of entry. Mm -hmm. So we believe that there, that there shouldn't be an increase of the base tier, but we do believe there are some heavy, heavy, uh, co heavy uh, Shopify merchants that should be charged a little bit more based on what you're actually uh, offering them as a service. Um, I just want to try to wrap my mind around profit. So what are going to be the key elements that are going to increase our profit margins in, in the solution? If you can just help me highlight high level top two or three items, mm -hmm. please. Yes, of course. For for this solution, the main way to actually improve your improve your your profit margin is actually by reducing the cost that, it, that you inquire as a company by actually offering some of the, the services you give to your merchants. The idea here is that by reducing your, your delivery fee and also the advertisement you actually spend uh, per uh, uh, the fees you actually charge, you reduce your costs. That's the main way here you actually improve, the, your, improve your margins. Also, by actually having a very uh, localized community, you, you, can actually, uh, you can actually see possible new ways to actually expand to other, to other parts of a country or the continent. We believe that this is actually a very standard approach you can actually do. And, and as we know, standard usually, standardized process usually re reduce costs. And as we mentioned before, we, this is a scalable solution. So with more merchants that you're hoping to add on with this new solution, it'll be more merchants, more customer, and inevitably more, more profits. Uh, yeah, I'd like to bring you back to the concept of the location feature. Um, people on Shopify will typically look for specific features, exclusive, uh, you know, features to their products, uniqueness as a brand. So could you clarify why you mentioned that that uh, would basically simplify and attract not just new merchants, but new customers and generate more traffic? Um, I would, my, my, my instinct would be that it would reduce because we're, we're adding a new criteria that doesn't really exist when customers are typically shopping using the app. Are, you're saying that this will become less attractive to merchants or to consumers? To consumers, potentially. I think it will become more attractive to consumers because you're adding a new way of, of shopping for them. Because the way that we see, for example, Uber, Uber Eats right now, you go into your app, you see what food options are available. But if, but if you could see that with, for example, like you need to buy a shirt kind of urgently, 
you have some groceries that you need delivered, you have some, not groceries, pharmacy or any any of those like products that you don't have right now, like let's say you're here right now and you, you need a shirt, like you can have that approach where they, the consumer can go to the app for more urgent things that they need to buy right now or they don't want to wait the, the, the shipping period for. And, and that's how we were, we're kind of looking at it. I want to add uh, the shop. The idea is to improve the Shopify experience to actually be more of our daily needs rather than just being something we order once or twice a month. Yeah, we we kind of base this like in Dominican Republic, we order a lot of things like and, and I haven't seen this where I was living in the US at the moment. So that's kind of ex the experience that we wanted to have just those regular everyday things that we could get through the app. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello? Hello? Hi everyone, uh, so for the final presentation of the day of the ICC 2023, excuse me guys, thank you. So for the final presentation for the ICC 2023, I'd like to call upon McMaster University to the podium please, thank you. Hi, I'm 
Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Sean. Nice to meet you. Hi, Christine. So nice to meet you. I'm Chinese. Hi, I'm Tyler. Hi, Christine. I'm Sean. It's nice to meet you again. Hi, I'm Tyler. Nice to meet you, Christine. Christine Ariel. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Darlene Wilson. I'm a senior director of software engineering and cybersecurity at Ericsson in the IoT space. Hi, my name is Tyson Greenquang. I'm a management consultant focused on private equity, uh, doing M&A integration and strat planning. Good afternoon. I'm Serge Edou, uh, 15 years in aerospace, mostly in operations and strategy. And I'm Sam Watts, the CEO of Welcome Hall Mission. Hi, I'm Christine Zalzal, and I'm the Senior Vice President of a wealth management firm, Aviso Wealth. Nice to meet you. Entrepreneurs, they are all around us and within us. Spotify is a wonderful platform for entrepreneurs to thrive. Thank you so much to the CEO and the C-suite of Spotify for joining us today to talk about continuing growth and encouraging entrepreneurship with Spotify. We are the McMaster Consultants. My name is Jachini, and I am accompanied by my colleagues, Sean, Tyler, and Ariel. And today, we will be talking about the growth and entrepreneurship. There is a wonderful opportunity here for Spotify to be an industry leader in the e-commerce market by protecting the interest of its merchants and also empowering the growth of entrepreneurship. We have a preferred solution today that my colleagues will go into more detail about, and that is a shop app overhaul. We will be creating a more engaging platform, supporting earlier stage entrepreneurs, and doing community engagement using our four-step plan, Sell. We will be setting up new relationships, enhancing the shop app, launching everything, and finally, taking a look at the performance. I'd like to introduce you to Sally. Sally is a 34-year-old mother of two. She is a new entrepreneur. She makes high-quality sun hats She's currently a Shopify merchant, and she also is a user of Amazon merchants. She has some needs. She doesn't want her clients to have a difficulty differentiating her high-quality product with those low-quality products that are around it. She also wants brand recognition for those hats. She desires more support as a budding entrepreneur, and finally, she wants more customer feedback to grow her brand. And with that, I'll go into some key issues that Spotify is currently facing at the moment. The first one is the competition. We know that Amazon is a huge competitor in our market right now, and we want to see how we can come above that. Next, it's the merchant concerns. The merchants are concerned that we are going to turn into Amazon. We are going to recreate those products and commoditize the products that they worked so hard to create. And next, it's the prioritization of growth versus profit. Do we want to grow right now or do we want to be profitable? That is what my team, the McMaster Consultants and I, will be going through today. And with that, Sean will now walk us through the analysis. Thank you very much, Jachini. So based on the key issues facing you at Shopify today, we decided to dive in a bit further to determine exactly what sort of opportunities are available to you. First, we decided to look at the financial performance of Shopify itself. Right now, there are some big concerns that Shopify is failing its investors. As a result, the share price has been dropping in recent years. However, it's important to note that the actual financial performance of your company is doing just fine historically. Revenue is growing and the same, at the same rate, in fact, better than your costs. Your costs are also increasing, but not quite as high, which is leading to a growing EBITDA. 
This means that over time, you will continue to succeed with your financial model. The falling share price itself is actually just the result of a market correction. Yes, right now you are having a bad Q20, uh, Q1 and Q2 of 2022, but this is just the result of the macroeconomic factors and not a result of your financial situation and your, mod your business model today. Next, we want to look at the merchants themselves and how well they are using your services and what they need. Looking at this, you can see that merchants are having many different issues with, within Amazon. They are unable to sell their products in a way that they are not stuck using uh, a platform that puts their products right next to others. They are also extremely worried about Amazon's ability to copy their product, sell it at a cheaper price using their large resources, and effectively put themselves out of business when they're only trying to grow as entrepreneurs. We have identified some opportunities to fill in these gaps here and actually be able to improve your offering for the merchants that you are serving and truly own that entrepreneurship start to finish. I would like to remind you of Sally. Sally has many issues using Amazon, which Shopify can leverage to create a better experience for her and other merchants like her. Speaking of Sally, I would like to remind you of her key needs that my colleague Jachani brought up earlier. These are needs that we will need to provide opportunities to complete for you to move forward with growth and profit into the future. Based on this analysis, we identified three key opportunities for you to take Shopify into the future. The first opportunity is to expand internationally. We know that you are geography mostly focused in North America, and this is where you have over half of your current merchants and where over 70% of your revenues are coming from. There is an opportunity for you to dive further into the emerging markets where we know there is a strong set of GDP growth and you'll be able to better capitalize on those who aren't being served by Amazon right now. Next, there's an opportunity to, re to overhaul your shop app. Right now, it has launched and it is making your current merchants worried. Right now, they are seeing their products next to other products. It's reminding them a lot of Amazon and they are strongly concerned about the possibility of you actually commodifying their own product and selling it right there next to theirs. Finally, there is, and through this method, the renovating the shop app, you would be able to demonstrate a more mall-like experience focusing on the stores and the brands themselves and not the individual products, alleviating those concerns. Finally, there's an opportunity to expand further into retail partnerships ensuring that your merchants are having better opportunities to provide their product to consumers, but without having to place it next to others directly on an app, and again, increasing those Amazon concerns. We decided to evaluate these opportunities available to you on a relative scale based on the key issues affecting you today and how well we can meet them. As you can see here, Overhauling the shop app is your best opportunity to take Shopify forward into the future, focusing on growth. This is by far your best opportunity, and this is what we will take you forward towards. To talk more today about our preferred solution, here is my colleague Ariel. Or Tyler. Apologies. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. This preferred solution focuses on not only engaging customers and driving them to the shop app with an engaging uh, experience for them on there, which would provide value to, to merchants in general, but making it a better experience for merchants at all ends of the entrepreneurial spectrum. The first part of that is overhauling that shop app. Right now, your partner merchandisers are frustrated that products are placed next to each other. This overhauled shop app would focus on creating a shopping mall-like experience in a digital setting, where just stores are placed next to each other and users can browse within those stores. Also, supporting entrepreneurs at earlier stages in the entrepreneurial journey through, through the Rise Up Accelerator program. Shopify views themselves as a company that arms the rebels against the empire of Amazon. 
What do rebels do when they see a large empire? They rise up. And that is what that program aims to help early stage entrepreneurs do and engage in this revolution. And the third part is community corners. These would be community engagement channels formed by a partnership with Discord that integrates the chat community engagement services of Discord with the shopping services of Spotify to create a platform for entrepreneurs to engage with their customers. How does this benefit entrepreneurs like our pal Sally? Well, she looks for control over her shopping experience. She can't get that on Amazon. She can't even get that within the shop app right now because her products are listed alongside other products. She also wants access to the users and the end shoppers, wants to learn more about feedback to improve her products and personalize them to the taste of customers. And she's looking for entrepreneurship empowerment and helping her grow as an early stage entrepreneur with better products and better practices. In terms of how we, are we would advise to implement this project, the implementation plan starts off with setting up new relationships so that all of these implementations can be put into action. Next, enhancing the shop app will be launched to create that core experience for all current users and future users, while the remaining partnership program and accelerator program would be launched over the next 18 months with an opportunity to look at performance and reevaluate the path forward thereafter. This is our sell plan for you to continue to grow Shopify, to gain that market share in the marketplace economy, and be the go-to platform for entrepreneurs. In terms of how the pricing structure works, this is something that needs to be implemented over the course of the plan as well. Right now, Shopify hasn't changed their prices at all since 2017. Obviously, it would be tough. It, it's always tricky to change your prices. Customers may leave, they may be disgruntled. But if there's one thing entrepreneurs understand, it's the impacts of inflation. And because of that, the prices are, have been adjusted accordingly to follow the rates of in, inflation, uh, an estimated average over the past few years, and undercut that rate to be an understandable, OK, it increased a little bit with inflation, but didn't match it. So we're still trying to cut you a deal with these services. The accelerator program. Rise Up is capturing potential Spotify account, Shopify accounts before they can go to competitors. Ready businesses are going to Amazon with products. Ready businesses are going to Etsy with their products. Some entrepreneurs don't have their products fully built yet and ready to deploy. And that's where this accelerated program comes from, helping them create those products to get them into the Shopify ecosystem before they can go to a competitor and building that loyalty in the next wave of, of entrepreneurs. It starts off with selecting entrepreneurs with feasible ideas and a strong background that would make it seem like they could be successful in this program. In the first six months, that's when product design is of focus. One of the partner community engagement platforms through Discord would be created to engage with the community, and it would start being, this engagement community would start being pushed on the shop app to help this new business get some exposure to first adopters and start getting feedback on their products. Over the next six months, that's when they start getting phased into the core Shopify offerings. They're getting sales and marketing insights from the data analysis on the Shopify platform, as well as starting to get a, a handle of what the logistics uh, services from Shopify are to support them. And by the end of the program, when they're ready to graduate after a year, that is when they can launch their Shopify shop with all sorts of, uh, with the services that are available for existing shops, as well as getting IP support from a third party partner brought in. Over the course of phase one, the key, options, uh, key actions are building relationships with Discord and the partners in the Accelerator program. With Discord, this involves transparent communications with them about aligning their, their priorities as an organization, making sure they're a suitable partner, and ensuring that there is a software fit between the two organizations. But that, based on our research, that is the top choice for a partner here. Also, developing the accelerator program structure through bringing in the necessary expertise. Many accelerator programs make use of advisors and entrepreneurs and residents with great experience in the space, and this program would do the same. Those that want to give back to the entrepreneurship community, those that have been impacted by Amazon taking over, and want to make a difference in stopping that from happening. Also, those updates to the shop app, Ariel will get more into them later, will start being developed in this app, uh, specifically those core offerings with regards to turning it into that shopping mall experience. This stage will just looking to set the stage for all these new products to be dropping in the future while starting to build those relationships to make sure the expertise is there. It'll be driven by you, the CEO, as well as those partners that are being engaged. The expected costs for this phase are around $4.9 million. 
Over the course of this uh, community engagement partnership, what does it look like? Well, Spotify and Discord will come together to create these community corners that are integrated into shops. Discord has the capability to let communities come together and chat with each other, chat with their favorite creators, chat with businesses, and overall have real-time, real conversations about different topics of interest. Within that Discord app, that Discord website, the uh, entrepreneur's shop could be integrated directly into that platform to ha have their products displayed while the community is engaging with that business. Shopify itself could link to that Discord community in the shop app to help the uh, early adopters get there and start talking to entrepreneurs, start talking to other customers, and give feedback about the products that they're trying out. This would also be available for existing Shopify shops that are bigger, who just want to engage their community, get feedback on, on, pro on products, and improve the future. In phase two, the key actions are revolve around enhancing that core offering. This is when that shop app update would become more available and be launched to all users who are using Shopify. A big part of this is making sure that uh, the partnership is finalized with Discord, uh, the legal documents are put in place, and the uh, software development to integrate the two platforms and develop those community platforms are uh, created during this phase, as well as de deploying those shop app improvements. Over the course of this phase, that launch, as well as the development of those community corners, is esti estimated to cost around $6.5 million and is getting the core offering of shop of the shop app up to standards while setting the stage for these future areas of improvement. To take you through the rest of the plan, here's my colleague Ariel. Thank you, Tyler. Now that we have a better understanding of the first two phases of our cell plan, the next phase will be an 18-month process. Here, the key actions are to first do a soft launch of the Rise Up program to ensure that we, you are meeting the needs of those early entrepreneurs in terms of ensuring that they have the necessary support and guidance to launch their entrepreneurial um, aspects. This will include 10 entrepreneurs that will be selected, as well as after the one-year incubation period for the Rise Up program, we gain, you gain some feedback from the entrepreneurs themselves to ensure what necessary steps need to be made in order to improve the Rise Up program further. During this phase as well, it also includes launching the software integration to put in that Discord community as an offering for entrepreneurs. This community will be available within the shop app itself, as well as on the online storefronts that Shopify develops with the entrepreneurs. And lastly, we will, you will be doing a hard launch of the shop app itself in terms of the updates and the overhaul of the app. The objectives here are to really gain a bit of a feedback of the Rise Up program before fully launching it in the future, as well as launching the improved and newly created shop app. The total cost for this phase is sitting around $3 million, and that's based off of the cost for the launch itself in integrating this community Discord platform into the shop app as well as the online storefronts of the entrepreneurs or merchants. In terms of the shop app improvements, to give you a bit of an understanding of what exactly this looked like, for end users themselves, when they use a shop app, they'll have the opportunity to search for products. However, they'll be shown different merchant online option stores in order to decrease the competition among the merchants and also satisfy the merchants that will be within this app. The end users will have the opportunity with the Discord community to really communicate with the merchant themselves, ask questions or recommendations for some of the products that they're looking for, as well as meet like-minded shoppers. The community Discord feature that will be within the storefronts 
for the merchants and the entrepreneurs is a way for them to build community relationships as well as personalize their offerings to their shoppers. This gives them a much broader access to more shoppers as well as building the community relationship and loyalty around their products, their brands, and their stores overall. And so why would end users go onto the shop app instead of Amazon when they're looking for a product themselves. When they have this opportunity to build community engagement, have loyalty to the products that your merchants will have, they have that opportunity to have a personalized experience on the shop app that is authentic because they will have communication with the merchants themselves in terms of any recommendations uh, that they need, as well as that opportunity to participate in product improvement, especially for those that will be participating within the Rise Up program. Those entrepreneurs within the Rise Up program, their products will also be featured on the shop app. And get, that gives them an opportunity to gain feedback on their own products, make improvement where necessary, and really have access to early adopters and continue to build a pipeline of customers in the future. And lastly, our phase four, which is looking at the performance. This is a phase that will take place from 2025 and onward. Therefore, it will be ongoing. With this, you want to launch the Rise Up program to its full capacity, and that means continuing the marketing initiatives that will be involved, as well as moving forward with your first cohort that we recommend being 50 individuals or early stage entrepreneurs, and having an emphasis on undeserved communities as well to really give them an opportunity to be part of the Shopify experience and family and this will have a global reach. Therefore, those 50 early stage entrepreneurs that will take part in this program, it is recommended that you don't just focus on North America, but you also focus on a global reach for these entrepreneurs in, or in order to start growing that integration within a global community. As well as in this phase is continuing the iteration and improvements of the community partner platform in order to ensure that improvements are made going forward. Overall, this has a total cost at around $1 million. And the objectives are to finalize and launch the program as well as continually improving the services that you offer to your merchants as well as early stage entrepreneurs. And lastly, we have our key performances. In terms of the key performance indicators, to make sure that this recommendation is successful, we recommend that a target of 50 individuals participate in the Rise Up program itself, achieve a 15% annual growth of the end users or shoppers that will be within the shop app, as well as increase the global awareness of the program. For some financial projections, overall the expected total pro uh, finances will be a cost of 15.4 million, as well as a revenue projection of 48 million. And we're more than happy to go into some details to explain further within the Q&A. And now to take you through some of the risks as well as finish off the presentation, here's my colleague Dechaini. Thank you so much, Ariel. With any plan, we know that there are risks. So today, we have identified three risks that you will have to take into consideration. The first risk is the concept of a low entrepreneurship buy-in. The likelihood of this is low, but unfortunately, if this were to take pack, if this were to take place, the impact would be high. Here, we would provide incentives for initial merchant updates, and once begun, those merchants will realize their benefits, therefore increasing the uptake. 
The next risk is the concept of negative interaction between consumers and merchants. Of course, we did discuss that we would be providing a moderation here. However, in the case that this takes place, we would provide a Shopify managed moderation team and provide an opportunity for the merchants to get a subscription plan to manage that moderation. The last risk is an inconsistent consumer experience. The likelihood of this is medium, and there is a low impact contingent on the fact that we would provide strict quality controls to ensure that our merchants rec um, meet specific standards. And with that, I would like to bring us back to Sally. Let's recall some of her needs that we discussed in the beginning. Her clients now no longer have difficulty differentiating her hats from those knockoff brands. Next, she also is able to gain better brand recognition through this plan. She now has a community of support that she is able to leverage. And finally, she gets a lot of customer feedback. Now you can see that Sally has a great big smile on her face. So our preferred solution is a great opportunity for you, the C-suite of Shopify, to use to do a shop app overhaul. Using this, we will create an engaging platform, support early stage entrepreneurs, and involve community engagement. Entrepreneurs are the future, and we do want to make sure that they are fully supported in everything that they wish to do. Thank you for listening, and we will now open the floor for any questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very, very interesting and nice slides. I'll steal your uh, normal <laughs> comment. Very nice slides. Um, walk me through the algorithm for this, this, the digital mall and how that works. Is what is the, with 1.7 merchants on the platform, how does that look? How does it get populated? How are the stores selected that I would see if I was the end user, the end customer? Right now, this shop app features all the mall's products, and then they can be searched for it together. And this has caused a lot of rifts between Shopify and the merchants. When you look for shoes and see a big range of shoes, just like you would on Amazon, that's putting products from different merchants side by side. And that's not something merchants are enjoying because their prices are being compared against competitors directly. When you go to a mall, you go into the store and you just see the products from that store and you're able to look at them in isolation. So in this shop app overhaul, the mall setting would be just stores as uh, search results. When you look for shoes, it would show you every store available that uh, has shoes, that has, has those to offer, and you can search in a more specific manner. You can look for dress shoes, women's shoes, anything. Uh, look for specific products. It gives you the stores that would be able to provide them so that you're not comparing products side by side when you go on there, but you're still able to keep that loyalty to specific stores and sort through them and explore new stores without that side by side comparison. Thanks. Um, really nice delivery on the presentation as well. Um, I have a question on the, uh, it's called the accelerator or incubator offering. I think it's really interesting, caters well to entrepreneurs. Um, as anything at that early stage, there's, uh, you know, high risk um, in order to generate revenues, you need high volume, uh, it's low returns, et cetera. What, could you, could you explain a little bit or elaborate on the revenue model for that for Shopify itself? How do you envision, you know, all the way from the funding to the actual return on the investment? This is looking at downstream revenue and create, getting a better market share of the marketplace market in general. The direct revenue from the accelerator program is just looking at $10,000 a year per, uh, per accelerator client to engage in that and use Spotify's resources. So with that initial 10 to 50 uh, entrepreneurs, that's not a huge amount of revenue on its own before that product expands. The huge revenue opportunity that exists there is just by making uh, Shopify that go-to entrepreneurship platform to help capture more of that market, take from Amazon, take from FT, and, uh, and increase that. So we're looking at increasing that share of entrepreneurs from around the 30% that it's at right now compared to Amazon and Etsy and those other players in the space and increasing it to at least over 50% of all new entrepreneurs using that as their go-to platform to design their products and get it to consumers. Thank you for the presentation. Um, interesting. Uh, I like the smile on Sally's face. Hopefully you can put one on mine. Um, so 
I, please correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is your plan suggests a $48 million revenue or top line increase. Uh, currently, we stand at $4.6 billion, which technically represents 1% increase in revenue and a lot of effort behind it. So please, if you have to convince me that it's the best thing we can do in terms of uh, revenue <coughs> outcome. Yes, absolutely. Right now, we have identified that your current performance is exceptional. It's, it's working well. You are developing your costs at a lower rate than your revenues. So we aren't particularly concerned about hitting profitability at this exact moment. Right now, we want to drive growth. The initial revenues that you'll be seeing in the early stages of this plan are not large revenues, as you mentioned. They aren't hitting these 50%, 10 20%. We're not going to try and sell you that this is some massive instant increase, but this is your future. These entrepreneurs who are getting tied into the Shopify ecosystem are the ones who will be paying for all of your products on the future and will be able to consistently bring in revenue for you all the way down into your long term. I'm going to ask a similar question to one that I've asked before. Uh, we at Shopify, since 2017, have not increased our subscription prices. Uh, that's kind of the holy grail for us. And you're telling us you can do that. Convince me that that's a good idea. I know you only said 3.5%, but uh, is that really the best way for us to proceed? Right now, Shopify undercuts their competitors significantly. When you look at the cuts that Amazon takes from sales on their platform, or Etsy takes from sales on their platform, you're already a much cheaper alternative to those platforms through your, your subscription prices in the basic plan and the advanced plan and the Shopify plan. Paying for that monthly website is much lower than the 8 to 10% and, and up, often up to 30% that Amazon takes off the revenue of selling a product. So while the prices will be increased, they'll still be significantly below what the competitors are charging. The price doesn't seem to be the issue in terms of pulling, uh, in terms of pulling customers or merchants from those other platforms. The issue is that customers are on those other platforms. And, and they don't uh, have the same, or they have similar services in terms of providing a marketplace for entrepreneurs. So by making this a compre more comprehensive entrepreneurship platform, that should pull in more merchants rather than low prices would, which it would still be lower than the competitors. Thank you, that was a great presentation, great energy by the way. Um, the Rise Up, which by the way I love the branding, it's very empowering as a, as a name. Um, I saw the numbers that you're planning to have 50 uh, to target, et cetera, and it's a co-creator type of program, right? It sounds expensive when you start co-creating. Um, so what happens if it really takes off? There's 1.7 million merchants. How are you going to have the intake process, decision-making to really manage uh, going forward this program? To clarify the stages of the program, those 10 initial entrepreneurs are soft launched to learn about how the program's going and improve it for the, for the future full launch. That first 50 entrepreneurs is merely a first wave. That's the first class, the holy grail uh, people to put forward from this program. And going forward, there's always an opportunity to expand that. As Ariel stated, it's going to be global. It's going to be from different industries and entrepreneur, any entrepreneurs that are looking to build a product. And there's so many out there. And you, being the go-to entrepreneurship platform, you want there to be space for everyone. You don't want to be turning away potential customers. So beyond that, 50, uh, that first wave of 50 entrepreneurs in the first year of the program, that would be when the program starts to expand and build over time and increasing that intake. Um, I, yeah, I also like the the Rise Up plan. Um, I think it's very empowering for, for new entrepreneurs and it's good for stickiness over time. Uh, for existing merchants on the platform, what is the value proposition for them? We're raising some prices. We're raising our subscription fees, right? What? Tell me what more are they going to get out of this? So the overall program that we are providing to the customers today is more than just the initial entrepreneurship intake and education programs. However, the original uh, intake programs will also be able to provide entrepreneurships a lot of that missing context. Right now, entrepreneurs have, are building pieces individually from different places, right? So a lot of them are taking the first look at where costs are coming from, where the logistics, where they can buy warehouses or who they can rent warehouses from. 
Providing this overall holistic experience will fill in many of the holes that are missing in their knowledge. On top of that, the app overhaul itself will ensure that they are getting the full benefit from the mall experience and the interactions with their customers, increasing the stickiness with the customer to them themselves. And that will be what we are providing to the existing customers of Shopify. Thanks. I love that that question was asked, because I'm going to ask the other side of it. Um, Clearly, you, you mentioned Amazon um, as one of the key uh, issues uh, as a competition, and they're very good at increasing the user base. Um, what are you doing beyond enhancing what is an already compelling value offering for um, you know, your, your entrepreneurs and the merchants um, to increase that side of the transaction? What are you doing to increase the number of people who are going to be shopping through the platform? Where Shopify differentiates itself is on product quality and intimacy with the seller. Uh, where Amazon differentiates itself is that convenience and finding cheap alternatives. So if customers are looking for a knockoff of the real thing, they can go to Amazon all they want. But when they want those high quality products, they have many sellers that have sustainability benefits in their products. One customer of, or one merchant of Shopify was Allbird, as, as you outlined earlier in the information provided, and they struggled with being on Amazon and having knockoffs replicate them, whereas on Shopify they could be free to push forward their sustainability benefits and their quality. So merchants who are looking to push forward quality products, Shopify is the place for them, especially given that they can get that uh, input from their community with this community engagement partnership on improving their products over time. Um, can you talk a little bit more around what the uh, recommendation is bringing in terms of profit margin uh, expansion, um, and especially knowing that our share price is directly linked, and there are some concerns in the market now on, uh, on our share price and our profit margin. Can you tell me a little bit more on the contribution of that aspect? Yes, so the share price yourself, uh, itself is not something that is ne necessary to actually be concerned about. It was a wild overcorrection. Over so you were in 2020, uh, 2020 and 21, you were hitting extremely high valuations, which were not representative of the actual value of Shopify. This is something we have seen before in previous tech industries in the dot-com bubble. And in uh, something today you can see is in Tesla, you're seeing these corrections. Your actual underlying financials are excellent. And as a result, we decided that it is the best opportunity for you to focus on growth and how you can take those future revenue streams away from Amazon and other international and global uh, entrepreneurship-focused programs. So this is about a, providing a long-term profitability. And we know that your investors and your company itself will see the value in this over providing an instant profit project. I'll ask a question now about risk, um, because you identified several risks which would automatically pop up into our minds here as Shopify. Negative interaction with merchants and inconsistency of experiences on the platform, merchants that don't respond, that sort of thing. I'd like you to maybe elaborate a little bit more uh, because you were getting towards the end of the presentation. So give me a little more juice on what you're going to do, because that would be a concern, because it could flatten out this uh, idea that you suggested. Yes. So there are the two risks there identified. The first, negative interaction with the customers and the overall quality consistency across the Shopify stores. Right now, Shopify is providing an excellent job of, of providing custom websites for your individual merchants. However, having them on the app itself as uh, malls and, and stores individually makes it more of a Shopify-specific risk that you are taking on in consistency and quality and not just the brand itself. As a result of the intake program, which my colleague Tyler mentioned, we will be ensuring that there are vetting processes in place to ensure that the merchants coming in understand that the quality concerns. And further on that, if we are seeing that the merchants that you have are dropping in quality as they are not upholding their moderation or they are not upholding their storefront itself, we recommend that you actually take them off the place itself if they cannot do that, or alternatively, you engage them in the Shopify moderation team. This is a product that you could offer where you provide your own moderation team and allow your merchants to use this through a subscription plan 
allowing them to not have to have their own moderators all the time and be able to reduce that negative interaction that is possible with the customers throughout. So the uh, three solutions you propose, they sound really good. Um, question is, if one or let's say all of them actually don't work, what's your contingency plan? Just to clarify, you're saying if we tried each individual one and none of them worked? One thing that is important uh, to, to see about entrepreneurship and supporting them is that there's so many areas where entrepreneurs need support. This community engagement stood out to us as the top recommendation for an area Shopify could add to their repertoire, a service they could add, but there's so many more services Shopify could support entrepreneurs with. We discussed marketing content creation and supporting them there and helping them integrate content into other social media platforms, especially given their new media brand, uh, media division of the company and supporting them in developing uh, content for the companies. There's IP support they could develop internally, product design uh, consultancies or HR, legal, so many areas to support venture capital that there's endless uh, different branches that could be added. I have a very fast question. What was the craziest idea that you threw out and didn't present to us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if our facilitator is here with the chart paper, but yeah, we, we talked about integrating within uh, just partnerships with endless amounts of social media platforms and just trying to get content sold directly on the page of every social media platform that has communities, YouTube, Reddit, Discord, Twitch, everything. That was a tough one. <laughs> that was ambitious. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Go there's, there's no stairs. There's no stairs. Hello everyone. It certainly isn't easy to stand here and give a presentation to an audience of 150 people. So I would like to sincerely have a round of applause for all our three finalists. Thank you. We will be starting the deliberation soon and I would also like to highlight the trophy for which the finalists and all of you have been competing and all the best for the results. Thank you.